Okay, so they say they can't change the law, and then they change the law with respect to leaving the registration window open. Which which is it? It's just it's completely incoherent how they're behaving, um, and it's it's about what you would expect for something like this that was jammed through on the last day of session written by a bunch of people who know very little about firearms. It's Dan Eldridge, he is the owner of Maxon Shooter Supplies and also a board member of the Federal Firearms Licensees of Illinois, sounded off yesterday when I chatted with him about the numbers that uh, he estimates complied with the state's gun and magazine ban. Uh, here's a quick headline, it's under 10%, more like closer to 4%, but we also talked a bit about the ongoing confusion there is uh, as to the gun ban registry and what is to be registered. Uh, so let's get right on into it. Of course, last month, Governor J.B. Pritzker, he uh, was asked a series of questions about the gun ban registry, uh, and those just now tuning into this saga in Illinois, uh, January 10th, so we're in the week of a year ago. Uh, tomorrow's the one-year anniversary of the Protect Illinois Communities Act going into effect. Governor J.B. Pritzker signed signing that after it's rapidly passed the Illinois legislature in a lame duck session at the uh, beginning of the year last year. So just before the new General Assembly came in, the lame duck General Assembly passed a ban on 170 different semi-automatic rifles, shotguns, handguns, uh, attachments, 50 caliber magazines and such. Uh, the law also included a, uh, a registration that was open from October 1st to January 1st, so three-month registration window in 2023. But in between all of that, you had lawsuits, a ton of lawsuits still working through the courts. So uh, if you've been tracking that with me, I uh, really do appreciate it. Uh, it's Bishop on air here like subscribe hit that notification bell but um the governor last month was asked about the at that time you know maybe a couple of thousand six thousand seven thousand people had registered firearms and then it doubled to fifteen thousand and this was mid-month last month here's the governor percentage has changed a lot it's gone up 50 uh, percent just in the last two or three weeks it's the number of people you know that have registered their uh, assault weapons. Do you, have, do you have concerns that more people who own assault weapons in this state are just going to ignore the law and that there could be a lot out there floating after January 1st when the law is in place? Uh, of course I'm concerned when people choose not to follow the law. Okay. Um, and uh, but, but let's be clear, this law is intended to keep people safe across the state. It will. Um, and the, the truth is that we have so much, frankly, to celebrate about the fact that Illinois is a safer state than many others. We're only the ninth state to pass a, a, uh, an assault weapons ban. Uh, there's been a tenth uh, since then, and I believe this will continue to grow across the 50 states. I, I, whether it'll reach every state, maybe not, but I, ultimately there needs to be a federal assault weapons ban, and I favor that. So again, uh, the governor last month uh, saying that uh, you know he, he believes it's doubled, uh, and that's, that's a good sign of people who are registering, but when you look at the total number of FOID card registrations versus the number of um, uh, actual people who registered a banned weapon, Weapon, it's 1.22% of the total number of FOID cards. So close to 30,000 individuals of 2.4 million individuals, 1.22%. However, others are looking at diff different numbers. Dan Eldridge, uh, Federal Firearms Licensees Board member. Uh, he is uh, somebody who's very knowledgeable in, in the sale of firearms and, and knows where to look as far as the percentages of estimates that there are. But really, uh, what are those estimates? And is this something that you can really sink your th teeth into and say, this is the number? That's ah, kind of tough to do. Uh, of course, I'm... Con Here's uh, Dan Eldridge. Okay, so it's, it's always... Uh difficult to get a good read on uh, firearm ownership in general um, by household in particular. Um, so what we did is we said, well, how many FOID card holders are there? Let's assume that most FOID card holders are firearms owners. And then go to the Washington Post study, which, you know, the Washington Post is not exactly a right wing uh, organ of the media. Uh, and their study in last year, spring of last year, came up with 20% of gun owners own an AR-15. Okay, so we we have that to start with. We have the Floyd card holders. We have that that own AR-15s. But now we have to expand that a little bit because, or quite a bit, because the broad reach of this act it covers much more than AR-15s. So we started looking at what else is there that's covered and how many 
do we think there are out there if we use the AR-15 as a scaler? Of the AR-15s and AK-47s that we sell combined, 85% of that total would be AR-15s and 15% would be AK-47s. Great. So we can bump the AR number up by 20% or so. Uh, additionally, there are AR pattern pistols. There are AK pattern pistols. There are shotguns that are banned by this. There are handguns that are banned by this. Uh, there's just a whole host of other firearms. And so we're we're just making some wild guesses about how many of these covered items are out there, um, applying that percentage to the FOID card list. And uh, yeah, you come up with a pretty low number. Now, it was pointed out to me that it might be too aggressive to say that most FOID cards uh, represent gun owners because there are households, for example, where uh, a domestic partner, husband, wife, whatever, may get a FOID card uh, when the other partner uh, owns a firearm. That's that's certainly possible. So, okay, let's say that only half the FOID, let's say that, that's the case across all Illinois households, that you have two uh, FOID cards for every gun owner. Well, okay, great. Now we're at, what, 8.4% compliance? We're still well under 10% compliance, and that's being extreme. You can look at uh, Rand Corporation surveys that's, uh, that showed 22% of households own guns. Um, Illinois has, I think, 5 million households. So right now you're at 1.1 million owners. 20% uh, of that is 220,000 ARs plus the other bits and pieces. Let's say that's 300,000 uh, gun owners that are supposed to be registering their stuff under this act. You're still under 10% compliance. Uh, so no matter how you slice it, the compliance is very low. The danger with these surveys of gun ownership is that they almost certainly underestimate how broad gun ownership is. Uh, think about it. You're sitting at home and somebody calls you up, a stranger calls you up on the phone and starts asking you about what guns you own. Uh, it's not unreasonable to think that a, a large number of people will just say, no, I don't own any and, and, and leave it at that. So... Uh, these are absolute best case numbers for the state that you're under 10% compliance. We think it's closer to four. Um, it just, it's just a mass rejection of, of this act. So again, my conversation with uh, Dan Eldridge yesterday, I also asked him about uh, how there's still confusion. Listen, I get a lot of your emails out there, a lot of your comments about what is a banned firearm? Uh, what is a banned attachment that needs to be registered? I mean, people even tell me that they're registering their magazines, which is not necessarily the case. Uh, so, you know, there's still a lot of confusion uh, about what needs to be registered. But if you recall, Judge McGlynn in the Southern District of Illinois denied moving forward with a preliminary injunction against the state's ban and registry because of uh, challenges that it was too vague. Uh, and uh, the, the judge said it wasn't vague. It was clear. And he did say Second Amendment aside, but Eldridge did uh, uh, correct me in the assumption that, uh, you know, that the judge said it was not vague and key term here, unconstitutionally vague. OK, so it's it's always uh difficult to get a good Dan, let's do it here and go okay first off the courts have not said that it's not unconstitutionally vague um, we are getting to that in the merits trial before judge mcclinn here this month um, he did he declined to grant a preliminary injunction on the basis of vagueness uh, simply because it, it appears he wants to get to the meat of the matter. He wants to go on to the merits hearing rather than enjoin the state from enforcing the registry. And then the state appeals to the seventh and the seventh stays it. And we've now burned another three months. So on the merits, the vagueness is a, a great claim. And it's only made stronger by, by this circus. Uh, you mentioned the Ruger 1022. There are, I believe, seven million of those out there. Now, half of the Ruger catalog for 1022s would be covered by PICA for pistol grips, for shrouds, for any number of features. This is a 22 rimfire rifle that most kids that get into guns would own. So right there, you've got whatever Illinois' portion is of three and a half million guns. Uh, 
it's 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 insane how many things are are covered by this potentially what the state police has done is they've produced a flow chart to determine if your gun is banned in addition to the the list of uh, banned firearms and they were empowered to write rules um, about how to administer this act. The rules largely are about the registry um, and they were done on an emergency basis in the dark of night, you know, at the 11th hour um, in such a way that there's no way around uh, that implementation. So what's covered is a great question. Uh, as I point out in the blog piece, You've got the Lake County state's attorney and the governor both claiming that magazines have to be registered. You have the governor additionally claiming that automatic weapons have to be registered. Neither of those is true. Uh, the word automatic or the, the, the term automatic weapon is nowhere mentioned in the act itself. If it's a select fire rifle that can fire automatic or semi-automatic, sure, it may be covered. So he's, he's talking about uh, the Lake County State's Attorney, and we flashed uh, his his Facebook account that says that uh, under the Protect Illinois Communities Act, Illinois residents who possess assault weapons, high-capacity magazines, and other devices listed in the act are required to submit an endorsement affidavit electronically. Uh, so uh, that's interesting. Uh, you don't have to re register your magazines, according to Illinois State Police. Even the governor last month uh, indicating people are registering all kinds of stuff. Well, that's, that's an exaggeration that often occurs in right-wing media. The reality is that most people really do understand these rules. And by the way, people are actually signing up, uh, registering their automatic uh, assault weapons, their, um, their uh, uh, high-speed, high-capacity magazines, rather. And, um, and, you know, as we get closer to it, we're seeing more and more people actually do what they're required to do under the law. So again, uh, the governor reacting to people registering all kinds of stuff, uh, automatic firearms, he says, or, uh, you know, high capacity, high speed magazines, he says. Uh, Eldred says uh, there's a lot of confusion here and that type of stuff doesn't really help. Two of the people that are tasked with enforcing or promoting this act don't even know what's in it. And so it really doesn't matter what the state police says is a banned item. All that matters is the opinion of the, the law enforcement officer who arrests you, the prosecutor who prosecutes you, and the judge that tries the case. And that's sort of the definition of vagueness. Nobody knows uh, what what's in there. And when people ask us, we simply tell them our opinion doesn't matter. So uh, I also asked Eldridge to elaborate a bit on some other things, and he talked about how the Illinois State Police have said that they are going to keep the registry open past January 1st. Uh, and the statement that I got from Illinois State Police said that the FOID portal will remain open for people to submit endorsement affidavits. ISPs focused on compliance and safety, they said. While the act set deadlines for submitting endorsement affidavits, it does not set forth penalties for late submissions. Uh, so, you know, Eldridge went on to discuss uh, the issue of of, uh, state police and where they're at on enforcement and uh, ultimately how they're going to react to this stuff. One thing, uh, the state police has said that they're processing some number of affidavits still. So these numbers could change. Another interesting wrinkle of this is that the state police has said that the registration window is still open, even though the deadline for registry is passed. Well, that's interesting. They say they won't prosecute people who register late. But that doesn't enjoin a Cook County or Lake County state's attorney from prosecuting you. You're, if you register something after January, after December 31st, well, you're memorializing the fact that you illegally possessed it for some period of time. Who in their right mind would do that? Uh, I, I just can't imagine. And so there's that. There's also all of the Freedom Week guns and the guns that were bought by people that were operating under the um, TRO. Uh, the, the two TROs that were, the three TROs that were out there earlier last year. Um, the state police has said, sorry, we can't, you know, there's no provision in this law for us to let you register your guns. Okay, so they say they can't change the law, and then they change the law with respect to leaving the registration window open. Which which is it? It's just, it's completely incoherent how they're behaving. Um, and it's it's about what you would expect for something like this that was jammed through on the last day of session, written by a bunch of people who know very little about firearms.
And that's uh, Dan Eldridge, Federal Firearms Licensees of um, Illinois. He, uh, of course, is uh, knowledgeable in estimations of what kinds of firearms people own as a gun dealer and supplier and uh, shooting range manager uh, there with Maxon's Shooter's Supplies in Des Plaines. So greatly appreciate him connecting with us uh, and sharing his thoughts. Uh, so where do we go from here? Of course, the law is still being challenged in the courts. Uh, we'll talk next with uh, Dan Calkins, who took his case all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. Court, but after conference on Friday and orders published Monday, uh, Calkins's case not going to be heard by the U.S. Supreme Court. So we'll talk about that next year with Bishop on air. Thank you so much for tuning in. You can uh, like, subscribe, follow along, uh, tell your friends about the show, support the program uh, by checking out some of the merchandise below and uh, stay tuned. Much more coming up here with Bishop on air.